So if you've been animating with vPython for any length of time, you've probably learned that vPython has no problem with two objects just passing through each other, occupying the same space. Um, it doesn't automatically uh, detect a collision between two objects that you create. It just allows them to pass through. Because remember, this is just a visualization. These aren't actual physical objects that it's considering. And so what I want to show you in this video is how you can detect a collision between two objects so that they don't pass through each other, but so that you can uh, enforce whatever kind of collision you want to have happen. So here's the basic code we're going to start with. We've created the two blocks that you just saw, the red block and the yellow block. Um, with each frame, they're each going to move a distance of 0.02 in the horizontal direction. Um, that's just a nice small number, nothing really significant about that. And here we have our animation loop, just like we've created before. It's going to run uh, forever right now. We set up our rate statement, and then in each frame of the animation, we alter their uh, X positions by this amount DX. Uh, B1 is going to be moving to the right, so it gets a plus DX. B2 is moving to the left, so it gets a minus DX. And so the way we're going to check for a collision, the first thing we're going to do is create a variable to, uh, to check for the collision. So let's just call that collided. So this thing is going to be true if they have collided and false if they have not. So this thing starts out with a value of false. And then we're going to change uh, this while, con while condition. Instead of running forever, we're just going to have it stop uh, when the two things have collided. So we're going to say while not collided, meaning once they have collided, this will be while not true, uh, not true is false. So then this thing will exit the loop. And let's come down here and say uh, print I detected a collision. There we go. And then after that, after it exits the loop, down here is where you would do something about the collision. So maybe you have them bounce off of each other, maybe you have them stick to each other. Uh, you know, whatever it is you're wanting to do with a collision, uh, that's where you would do something down here. But first we have to be able to check for the collision. And so basically we want to be able to check for whether these two boxes are occupying the same space. So think about it this way, I've got a box over here, that's box number one over on the left side. And then over here I've got a box number two and pretend I can draw uh, straight lines to make these actual boxes. Here I've got box number two. Now we've got some information about these two boxes. Uh, one of the things we know about them is their position. So this POS position vector, um, it measures the center of with the location of the center of each of these blocks. So for example, I can think about putting a dot in the center of this block, a dot in the center of this block. And so that's what those position vectors are. Now a basic way of checking for the collision would be to check for whether the positions are overlapping or have the positions passed each other. But really, I want to check for whether the edges have touched. And so what I want to check for is the distance between these two positions. Because if the distance between them is such that they're not touching, then I don't have a collision. But once these two positions are close enough for the two edges here to be touching, then I want to trigger a collision. So I want to think about the distance between them. Uh, let's call that maybe lowercase d for distance. So if I think about this distance between them, what I want to check for is whether that value is smaller than the uh, two sizes of the blocks put together, right? Because if I think about it this way, I've got the width of this block going this way, and I've got the width of this block going this way. So I want to compare this distance to half the width of this block plus half the width of this block. Because remember when you give this size vector up here, you're giving the, uh, the length from one edge to the other, and then you're giving the height from one edge to the other, and then you're giving the depth from the front face to the back face. So I want to check on this uh, separation distance compared with half the size of this block plus half the size of this block. So let's think about how we can do that. First thing I need to do is get the uh, distance between these two. So let's think about the distance between them in the x direction. So that's going to be b1.pause.x minus b2.pause.x. Now anytime you subtract something, you want to think about uh, which one needs to be on the left, which one needs to be on the right, uh, because it makes a difference whether this thing is positive or negative. I want to be able to detect a collision regardless of which one's left or right. So it's usually best to just go ahead and make this the absolute value. So we're calculating the distance between these two. And then I want to compare that 
with the uh, with the size of them. So I want to check for let's see. So we'll say collided equals. Uh, let's see. We want this to check for whether distance x is less than block one's width. So that'll be b1 dot size dot x minus or excuse me plus b2 dot size dot x because I'm taking this size dot x plus this size dot x this width plus this width oh but remember this is actually half the width so I actually need to take both of these guys and divide them by two so basically uh, let's see to make this a little bit cleaner we can put uh, parentheses around this just so that way this whole thing is being evaluated as one logical variable I know technically the the math will work out but I just I like to put parentheses around my logical stuff so basically this is checking for whether this distance is less than uh, these two half widths put together if it's not uh, if we're far enough apart then collided will remain false and we'll continue along the loop if it is uh, if it is true if it if this is smaller than these two then collided will be true and we'll have to stop the uh, the animation let's hit control 2 and see what happens let's also clear our uh, drawing there here we go here we go boop and they have stopped and we have detected a collision hooray now, of course, we might need to extend this to three dimensions, right? Because this is checking for collisions in the x direction. We might also need to check for collisions in the y direction and in the z direction. In that case, it's actually a bit easier to use spheres instead of boxes because then I can just check for the center to center distance against the radius. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let's take this code and copy it. And then we're going to create a new program. Let me get into the Python for beginners, create a new program. Let's call this sphere collision Oops. detection. There we go. So we'll do control A, control paste. And what I'm gonna do now is just change these folks into spheres. We'll give them the same position, same colors. Uh, we just have to change this size into a simple radius. So let's give them radius of 0 0.25, copy and paste paste there we go and so well, let's just keep calling them b1 and b2 call it body one and body two instead of box one and box two uh, so again we're adjusting their positions but now i want to be able to check for a collision uh, anywhere in in three dimensions so let's just call this distance and instead of b1 dot position dot x let's just have b1 dot position minus b2 dot position. Now, of course, these are vectors now. Vectors don't have an absolute value. They have a magnitude, so we're checking that magnitude. And now we're just going to check this against, instead of the just the x uh, uh, distance, we're going to check against the radius. So we'll have radius here and radius here. I don't need the divide by 2 because radius is already half the width. Oh, and I need to rename this distance x to just distance. Let's hit control 2 to run. Here come the two spheres, and we should still be able to detect a collision. Boop, there we go. Just as they, uh, just as their two surfaces touch, we detect a collision. Again, after that, you can have them bounce off, do whatever you want. But the beautiful thing is now I can make this happen in, uh, in 3D as well. So let's suppose I have them start um, at, uh, let's give this guy an, an X, a Y component of 1.5, a Y component of negative 1.5. And let's say I also adjust their uh, their entire positions now. Let's have this thing now turn into a vector. So I have dx comma dx comma zero. Oh, except this one needs to have a negative dx to be traveling downward. And then we'll do the same kind of thing here: copy and paste. And I just need to flip the signs so that they're going in opposite directions since they are coming from opposite directions. All right, let's try that. So now this one comes in from the upper left. This one comes in from the lower right. And thanks to our vector implementation, we can still detect a collision there in three dimensions. So I hope this is useful to you. Uh, if you're ever working with collisions in a physics class, uh, this takes care of the collision detection. So if you are uh, studying collisions, you would add something down here about what to do after the collisions. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.